All right, hello everyone. Eric Marks, FindingMiddleEarth.com. And today we're going to do something uh, really interesting and exciting. I hope it will help some people. Um, a lot of people with Fujifilm cameras have been wondering for a while what the best RAW processor to use uh, with the Fujifilm RAW files. Uh, there's a lot of, of incredible image quality and incredible data and beautiful color tones wrapped up into those Fuji files, uh, but it really takes a complementary raw processor to really uh, you know, get all the latitude you can out of those files. You have to really have a processor that can dig out all that beautiful detail and color that's there. So uh, there's been a big debate over this. Um, I'm simply going to walk you through three of the most popular raw processors out there right now. There are you know, quite a few more. These are the three that I've been using. And let's just take a look on um, how each processor, um, you know, renders each image just straight out of the camera uh, and how it renders the preview here inside of the raw processor. So before we get started, uh, if you guys are interested at all, I have a free 45 minute video talking about landscape photography gear. Uh, if you want to see that, it goes through all my gear and my camera bags and uh, lots of accessories that I have. If you guys want to see that, completely free, just go over to findingmiddleearth.com, click the big subscribe button in the top right, uh, put your email in the box, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, so the three raw processors we're gonna be using are Lightroom, which is right in front of us here, uh, the new On One Photo Raw 2017, and then of course Capture One Pro 10, all right? Um, so here's the three. They, they all have uh, pros and cons. Lately, Lightroom has been mostly cons for me. I've almost completely gotten away from Lightroom, um, almost completely. It's, it's, Lightroom is almost dead to me. Uh, it's, it's really bad with Fujifilm RAW files. It's really bad with sharpening now. The only thing that, that still brings me back to to Lightroom is the the functions inside of it to uh, categorize and organize your photos. It's really it's a really good photo organizer. Um, so let's go ahead and do something first before we get into the actual softwares. I uh, imported the raw files. Okay, the, it's the same Fujifilm raw file in all three softwares. I imported the raw file and then I exported just a clean 100% JPEG. No edits whatsoever have been um, applied to these images. And I just want to, you know, simply look at how it uh, processed and exported the JPEG out of each program. So we have Lightroom here, Capture One here, and On One here. So let's look at them in a uh, full, full size view here. So here's Lightroom. Okay. Uh, first thing I see is it's a flat raw file, right? The the colors are flat. There's no contrast. That's kind of how a raw file is. Uh, let's go to Capture One, which is this. Okay. So let's let's just go back and forth between them real quick. So there's Lightroom. There's Capture One and there's on one, all right? There's a big difference with on one, and we'll talk about that in a second. So Lightroom, Capture One, on one, all right? Now let's look at detail. So here's Lightroom. Let me zoom in on this board right here. Uh, when I was taking this photo, I focused. My focus point was right here on this board. Uh, and you know, it's it, honestly, this as a raw file, uh, that is exported to a JPEG, 100% quality, this should look much sharper in my opinion because I know my focus was on point, perfect, and this is just fairly soft to me. Now, of course, I apply post-production sharpening to all my files, like as most people do, but this, this one's a little soft. It doesn't render much detail, and Lightroom normally renders detail on my Nikon D810 RAW files, so that one's a little off to me. So let's, let's stay zoomed in at 100% and let's go to the Capture One file. Okay, so see immediately, so it's probably gonna be hard for you to tell this on uh, video because you're just watching this on YouTube, but in front of me, I can tell that the Capture One file just had a big lift in detail, especially texture, the texture in the wood here, uh, the edges of everything just got much sharper. So big difference between Lightroom here and Capture One here. The the detail is actually kind of massive difference. I mean, it just it looks like I just applied like 50% sharpening uh, in Photoshop. So, but there's Lightroom, Capture One, Lightroom, Capture One. Okay, just the the texture just had a, a big bump in texture detail and the way the contour in the image just got sharper. And then here is On One. So let's go back and forth between Capture One and On One now. So Capture One, On One. Capture One, On One. So Capture One and On One are pretty similar actually in the detail that's rendered, which is nice and refreshing to see. Um, if you go back here to Lightroom 
it just it just lacks the detail, uh, which a lot of people already know and have experienced. Um, so Lightroom is definitely the softest so far. Okay, so we know that. Uh, I would also say Lightroom is probably the flattest in color. So Light, Lightroom is the softest. I would say Capture One is the sharpest. And then On One is very, very close behind uh, Capture One. Uh, these are just my opinions, looking at them in front of my computer here. Of course, everyone you know has different opinions, especially when we're talking about, when I'm saying Capture One is sharper, I mean maybe 10% sharper, but to some people, um, you know, that, that means a lot. So that's why we're doing this test here. So let's just go through the files um, without zooming in and just look at the color, the overall uh, processing on the image. And, and again, these images are untouched. These are just right out of the camera and then exported to JPEGs. Okay, so here's Lightroom, Capture One, and On One. Lightroom, Capture One, and On One. Okay, so right away, if you go, for, here's Lightroom, and then Capture One, you can see there's a big color difference. And that's one of the reasons why I really like Capture One. Uh, anytime I shoot a sunset or a sunrise, it's almost always processed now in Capture One or On One, because both of them just, right out of the camera when you get the raw file in there both of those raw processors just give a punch to the the color and it, it's a very welcome uh addition in my opinion as a raw processor to just really punch the tones because it's not like it, it doesn't it doesn't process it doesn't add you know saturation and vibrance it just saves me the trouble from having to ruin the image later with tons of saturation and vibrance because i'm sure you guys know the more you play with that saturation slider the more you just kind of ruin your image so the fact that the colors are already rendered much nicer just when the file comes into the raw processor uh, is very nice to me. So uh, you'll notice that if, if you use Lightroom and Capture One and On One, you'll notice that Capture One and On One both uh, just kind of really punch the colors more so out of the raw file. So here's On One, okay? Capture One, On One. Capture One, On One. So right away, uh, if we're talking about just color, I can tell you that Capture One has nicer color in the water. I really like the aqua, the soft. This is this is a long exposure. Um, so in the middle of the day, so you know, obviously the water is soft. So I like that natural softness that it processes. I like the aqua green blue in the in the um, the water. I'm not in love with the sky in Capture One right now. Uh, just just you know, just coming in as a raw file. I think it looks a little too purple to me instead of blue. And if you go over here to on one, which is this file, uh, I'm actually surprised at how this kind of evens out the dynamic range as a raw file. Um, it looks like between the two files, if we go to capture one here and then on one here, you can see it's, it's almost like the on one file recovers the highlights a little bit and there's more detail in the clouds here and it's actually a nicer color blue. So if we go back and forth, just now that you can notice that, look at, look at, here's capture one and then on one. See that like there's a texture bump in the clouds when you go into on one, there's more detail in the sky. Yeah, so, all right, so now that we've talked about sharpness and color, you'll notice something that I'm sure you noticed the second that I, that I looked at the image. The on one photo here, if you look at the corners, it has these big black things uh, creeping into the corners. And what that is, is my circular polarizer and my ND filter, okay? I had two filters stacked on this image, uh, which totaled in 11 stops of light blocking in front of the lens that I could get this exposure. And because of that, I was shooting kind of wide angle. I was shooting a 16 millimeter. So it, you know, they creeped into the lens. So that was my fault. But what's interesting about looking at these files is that um, if you don't already know, the Fujifilm RAW files, uh, or the Fujifilm cameras already have an in-camera profile correction and chromatic aberration correction uh, before you ever get into a RAW processor. So you know how if you shoot Nikon or Canon and you, you import it into Lightroom, there's that nifty little enable profile corrections button. Uh, you might have noticed if you shoot Fujifilm, you don't have to do that. Or if you do check that box, it does nothing because there's already an embedded profile into the RAW file that has a lens correction on it. So what this tells me is that, let's go to the Lightroom file, okay? Lightroom can read the, the Fujifilm uh, imported, or the, the Fujifilm embedded lens corrections, okay? The one that comes in the file automatically, and it, those, it fixed the distortion, and it also, because of the distortion was fixed, it also got rid of my filter problem there. If we go to Capture One, which is this one, it did the same thing, okay? But here's an interesting thing. So let's go to Lightroom again, and then Capture One, 
Lightroom, Capture One. You see that Capture One kind of zooms in the image a little bit, almost like it, it cropped in a little bit more. So you can see Lightroom here is a wider shot, which is the original, and then Capture One, it's it, the way it read the uh, the lens profile from the Fujifilm camera is that it, you know, what, how, however uh, Capture One does its raw processing, it just thought it should be zoomed in a little more to fix the distortion. And if we go to On One, it didn't do anything. So I'm assuming that means On One doesn't have an engine that, number one, it doesn't read Fujifilm embedded lens profile corrections. And I think On, on One Photo Raw, as it sits right now, uh, which is the end of May in 2017, on one photo raw does not have any kind of lens profile corrections into the raw processor at all. However, I have spoken to the folks at on one and I'm 99% positive that is coming in an update very, very, very soon uh, from now. So that's nothing too bad to worry about. It's just an interesting observation that that's how each software handles reading the raw file like that. Because on one obviously didn't read the, the built-in lens correction, so it just left it the way it is. Lightroom read it and corrected it in its own way. And then Capture One read it and corrected it this way, where it zoomed it in a little more. So now that we've looked at these files up close, the exported JPEGs, let's go back into the actual raw processors and look at the raw files. So let's go to Lightroom here. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna do a quick uh, edit on each image here. Uh, nothing too fancy. We're not gonna get into Photoshop and all that. We're just gonna do basic stuff to make it look good. Um, and then we'll just kind of compare them and we'll, we'll see how each raw processor handles the edit here. So uh, first thing, let's lower the highlights a little bit. Let's recover some of those. We'll crank up the shadows just a tad here in Lightroom. All right, definitely add some contrast. Get that punching in there. Before I add too much contrast, one of my favorite tools in Lightroom is to scroll all the way down here and crank up the dehaze. All right, see, that does some really nice stuff to the color and the, the mid-tones is really where it, it kind of punches out the mid-tones and the micro contrast. Um, and then let's raise the exposure just a little bit. All right, uh, maybe not quite that much. And then let's find our white point and black point for contrast. So maybe about there. I'm holding uh, the option key, by the way, on my keyboard. And I'm just waiting until I see the white values and the black values start to clip. And I'm just going right before there to even out the histogram a little bit. Okay, so that's much more contrasty and much more pleasing to the eye. Uh, I kind of want to warm it up just a little bit. I don't think it really needs it, but... Let's play around with it and see. Okay, so that just makes the the wood uh, on the jetty there and the sand just a little more punchier in the warmer tones. Okay, um, let's add some vibrance, just a little bit, and maybe like one or two percent saturation. You gotta be careful with that. Uh, I'm gonna back off the vibrance a little bit. Okay, uh, something like that. Let's see, what else do we wanna do? Um, I think that's about good here, okay? Because that's that's just something that that you know that's that's something that most people do. This is how most people post process that that don't like the techie stuff of Photoshop. You just want to get a good process and, and post it on the web. That's good enough. Uh, before we move on, I want to show you something. So if you go down here to the lens corrections in Lightroom, you'll see what I mean. Uh, right here it says built-in lens profile applied. And if you click this little info tab, this little thing pop up, pops up and it says Fujifilm XT2 16 to 55 2.8. This raw file contains a built-in lens profile correction for distortion, chromatic aberration, and vignetting. The profile has already been applied automatically to this image. So there you go. It, this raw file came in with that embedded profile, and Lightroom obviously recognized that, and it built that into the processing and how it rendered our preview here. So that's why it it corrected. Now, there is no way to undo this that I've found. There's no way to get rid of this profile if we wanted to start from scratch and do our own manual thing. Because if you go over here to the manual lens corrections, we can't like undo this. See, we can't go in an opposite direction and, and undo the uh, the automatic profile that, that the file came in with. So, you know, that's whether that's good or bad to you, that's fine. Um, so I, let's just stop here. Let's say that that's good, okay? So now let's move on to on one. Photo Raw, and uh, like I said, On One Photo Raw does not have lens profile corrections yet, so for now we'll just leave these uh, annoying things in the corner, which was my fault because I left I uh, have the filters there, but it's no problem. I'll just you know I can just fix them later. Um, so let's pull down the highlights just like we did in Lightroom, just a little bit. 
we'll crank the shadows. Now, if you guys have seen my previous On One videos, you'll know that On One Photo Raw is the king of shadow recovery. I mean, look at this. That will literally boost out every shadow in, in the world. <laughs> so uh, we'll just do a little bit there. Uh, let's add some contrast, not too much. Uh, let's find our white point and black point here. Just a little bit. Okay. Um, and then let's do the dehaze. I don't think I've ever used the dehaze in uh, on one. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, maybe I should use it more. Um, okay. So the reason why I'm impressed here is because uh, that just did a whole lot to the image there. As I'm cranking in, in the dehaze slider, it's actually recovering highlights. Um, while adding texture and color and contrast, uh, which Lightroom dehaze tool did not do that. It, it kind of just added contrast and color, um, but didn't actually recover more highlights. So this is actually recovering. I mean, you can push it here and it would look horrible, but just look at that. Look how much it, it recovers. So that's actually kind of cool. So let's let's leave this around like 35%. That, that was actually kind of nice. Um, we're going to bump the exposure a little bit. Uh, we'll add some vibrance. Why not? All right. I'm going to add a little bit of structure because I actually like the structure tool in On One. It's nothing as gross as the clarity tool in Lightroom. Um, we'll do a little bit less than that. We'll do that just to kind of bring out some texture in the wood here. Uh, and then I'll probably just call it quits on that. Add a little bit more contrast. Make it a little punchier there. And then that's good. Okay, so we'll just we'll say that's good. Uh, then let's go to Capture One. All right, on Capture One. So this one, the, you know, the Capture One can look a little funky to people that don't know how to use it. So don't, you know, don't don't let it scare you. It's not that hard to use. It's just a little bit different of a learning curve uh, than most raw processors. But let's see. Let's recover the highlights just like we did with the other two. Um, okay, so I don't like what that's doing to the sand. The highlights here are really killing my sand. It didn't do that in the other two raw processors. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of highlight recovery here, and I'm gonna use my uh, curves here to, to crank the highlights down a little bit, and then we'll punch up the midtones a little bit to get the sand back. Just a little mini S-curve. All right. There we go, something like that. Uh, if you don't know how to use curves, that's a whole different video, but they're, they can be very helpful. Uh, and then we'll, what we'll do to get the shadow detail back is we'll just use the shadow slider, pump that up. We'll add some contrast up here. All right, now one thing you'll, you'll notice about Capture One's contrast slider is that it's horrible. <laughs> uh, it's, watch. It just it loves to blow out highlights. I don't know why it does this. I only use just I only just use it a little bit, but I mean it really blows out the highlights. So I'm just going to use about 10%. Um, we'll add a little bit of saturation in there to pump things up. Um, add just a teeny tiny bit of structure. All right, we'll do some a little bit more highlight recovery because those clouds are blowing out just a little bit. Um, okay, so we'll say that that's good. Uh, on the processing, let's let's crank the shadows up even more, and then let's go to uh, color. And one thing I do love about Capture One is that the Kelvin values, the white balance adjustment here, uh, when you when you push it to the warm, I don't know if you noticed that it. I don't know how it does it. It almost never affects the blues. It leaves the blue tones alone, which is amazing because when you're adding Kelvin to the warm values, you expect it to kind of ruin those nice blues because it adds yellow to it. But this, if you if you notice, let me reset this tool here. Uh, okay, so here's what we started with. I'm gonna start easing up the Kelvin values here. Watch the sand and the wood. It's really uh, just toning the the yellow and orange values in the scene without really affecting the blue sky. So I love that. That's It's a really, really nice uh, Kelvin slider inside of Capture One. So we'll leave it there. And then, so we'll call that good on post-processing, but now let's take a look at those lens corrections because I want to show you this. So in Capture One, unlike Lightroom and unlike On One, you can actually reset this back to zero, the distortion. And look, now 
it looks like what on one looks like where the filters are creeping in. So this is pretty much the original image with we're, we're basically telling capture one with this slider. Since we put it to zero, we're telling capture one, Hey, we don't want any help with the lens profile. We just want to see how the file looks without anything, any kind of distortion correction. So if you do want it, of course you can double click it and it defaults to hundred percent on the Fuji files. Um, so let's back that off. You, you know, you can back it off to like 80% or 50 or whatever you want to do and then it'll just it'll adjust itself so that's what's nice about capture one is you can actually choose how much um, distortion you want it to correct the lens profile and what I've actually learned uh, if we go back over to Lightroom for a second you can actually and you can do this in capture one as well but if you go to Lightroom uh, what I've been using on my XT2 files let me find the lens corrections here we go uh, if you do want to enable the lens corrections you can apply uh, a phase one the lens corrections for a phase one lens. And I actually think that looks quite nice on the Lightroom file. So you probably can't tell too much of a difference if we flick that off and on, off and on. Um, but I just like the way it kind of uh, adds a little bit more light to the corners. And it almost takes the middle of the image and kind of stretches it inward just a little bit to make it look a little more wide angle. I don't know. On certain images, it works. Some images, it's kind of fun to use the GoPro profile. You see that? How it, it kind of stretches it out. Uh, you know, it's not great. It's just it's fun to play around with. So that's before and that's after. Uh, you know, it just it, it can give you some cool effects sometimes. But anyway, uh, you don't have to do that because, of course, you have the built-in profile correction. So... Uh, we've processed the image now in Lightroom on one, capture one. Let's do a quick uh, recap here. So here is Lightroom. That's the way we processed it here. All right, here is on one. Okay, and here is capture one. So they're both three different looks. Uh, I like little bits of each look. And if I was actually processing this, I would probably take all three of these image in layers and kind of paint through different pieces. But here's one thing to keep in mind. So since I earlier said that Capture One had the uh, sharpest raw file representation to start with, um, that's what I've been using mainly uh, just because I like starting with the most detailed, sharpest file uh, that I can that I can get, right? But I mean, anyone would before you start processing. So that's not to say that you shouldn't use Lightroom and On One because On One is very, very close. I mean, this far away from being just as sharp as Capture One, um, and uh, On One has a huge update coming that's actually going to make it more desirable than Capture One because if it came down to just using one software for everything and Photoshop didn't exist, I wouldn't even consider Capture One. I would use On One exclusively, and that would be the end of it uh, because On One has so many more tools presets you can do layers and brushes um, and on one is just much more intuitive and more fun to use so uh, if you're if you just want like a if you're the kind of minimalistic post processor and you just want uh, a fun software that you you can do everything inside of one raw processor I'd probably recommend on one if you're gonna be using Photoshop and plugins and everything you know it's up to you you do your own research I think capture one is a really really good option and then Lightroom it needs some work <laughs> so um, now, if you're shooting Nikon and Canon files, and I've heard Sony files, uh, Lightroom does fine with those. It, it, for some reason, it renders detail perfectly there. But with Fujifilm files, specifically this video is talking about Fujifilm, uh, Lightroom just isn't there yet. Lightroom is not uh, good at processing Fujifilm files. It's just as simple as that. Capture One and On One, they are the two winners. So uh, I think we've learned some cool stuff here. Uh, this is the first time I've processed this image at all. I, I, I actually took this photo um, a few weeks back on my trip to the Gulf Coast. So I haven't had, had a chance to kind of see how it's going to look yet. I think it's going to turn out nice. It, it's a very simple photo. I think it might make a really nice black and white. Um, so yeah, I think we, we learned some good stuff. Uh, if you guys have any questions, further questions, or you want to see more videos like this and you want me to do more images and more image comparisons like this um, with, you know, with more interesting colors like sunsets and sunrises let me know in the comments what you guys want to see of course thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one if you would like to stay up to date on all of my photography videos and free tutorials please consider subscribing by clicking on my face and if you would like to find out more about me and how to improve your photography visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com